In the late 1930s, Romania's fighter force was comprised almost entirely of license-built Polish fighters, which were quickly becoming obsolete. Chief among these was the PZL P-24, which would be the primary inspiration and basis for Romania's new monoplane fighter. The Industria Aeronautica Rumuna, or IAR, studied the P-24 and incorporated some of its best features into a new aircraft, which would become the IAR-80. From the cockpit back, the design was based on the P-24, but the rest of the fuselage was an original design. Some changes took place after early test flights, including a more powerful engine and a lengthened fuselage. The finalised design was put into production at the end of 1939, with the first aircraft being completed in February 1941, the changes to the design slowing down initial production, as well as bureaucracy. Germany, who supplied a lot of the internal equipment for the IAR, refused to cooperate with Romania until they joined the Axis, which they did in November 1940, after fascist dictator Ion Andrinescu took power the month before. Several variants saw service, but the most successful was the IAR-81C, armed with a pair of 20mm MG-151 cannons. The Romanian Air Force had no modern strike aircraft, so decided to adapt the IAR-80 to fit the role, adding a centerline bomb rack and christening the new aircraft, the IAR-81. However, as the war progressed, it was clear that fighter aircraft, especially those that could deal with heavy bombers, were more important. The vast majority of IAR-81s were built and used as fighter aircraft, the 81C's heavier armament making it much more effective than previous models. Late in the war, earlier IAR-80 models were upgraded to the 81C standard, under the name of IAR-80M. The Romanians attempted to acquire a BMW 801 engine to use in the IAR-80, as used in the Fokker Wolf 190, but they were unsuccessful. They did, however, receive a Junkers Umo 211 for trials, the engine used in the 190 Dora series, but excessive vibrations in flight put an end to the program. The IAR-80 first saw combat on the opening day of Operation Barbarossa, the 22nd of June 1941, on the southern front of the offensive. For the next two years, the IARs flew support missions on the Eastern Front, faring well against the Russian Yaks and Lags. They saw success over Stalingrad, fighting for air superiority over the city and protecting bombers from fighter attack. By the summer of 1943, the IARs had been called back to Romania to defend its airspace from long-range bomber attacks, many of which were targeting the oil fields of Ploiesti, vital for the war effort. On the 1st of August 1943, the US Air Force launched Operation Tidal Wave. 178 B-24 Liberators attacked Ploiesti, and for the first time came into contact with a Romanian fighter. Ten bombers were confirmed destroyed by Romanian BF-49s and IARs, with two more probable kills, to only two losses. In June 1944, a large flight of P-38 Lightnings attacked the oil refinery and were met by the IAR-81Cs of Gruppel 6. At low altitude, the P-38s, many of them laden with bombs, were outmatched by the IARs, which claimed eight kills for one loss. Despite some success, by July 1944 losses were mounting and it was clear that the IAR was very much obsolete. Romanian IAR-80 units began to convert to BF-109Gs, ending the career of Romania's only home-built fighter. Much like the Japanese A6M0, the IAR-80 was a very effective and capable aircraft at the outset of the war, and upgrades could only improve it to a limited extent. It was outclassed within a few years of service, but in the hands of Romanian pilots, it still maintained a good kill-loss ratio against superior aircraft. They remained in service as fighters until 1949, when their role was filled by LA-9s supplied by the Soviet Union. They were relocated to training aircraft, but by 1953 had been replaced by dedicated trainers, also supplied by the USSR.